So you thought, look, kids are happy, young adults are not so happy. And so you started looking into the science of happiness. And what did you find? Well, we'd reached a bit of a crisis point at uh, Bristol University, and I felt I needed to do something. And I looked around and discovered that a former student of mine, Laurie Santos, who I taught as an undergraduate when I was at Harvard, had also encountered a problem at Yale. And she put on a course uh, that had been remarkably successful. So this really inspired me to try and do a version of it myself. So I contacted Laurie and her typical generous nature. She shared all her notes and uh, I put together a version uh, of her course and I called it the science of happiness. Hers, I think, was called Psychology and the Good Life. And um, I focused a little bit more on critical thinking and my own spin on stuff. And I just ran it as a pilot to see if anyone would turn up to it. And uh, I was surprised. Uh, 600 people turned up, even though they weren't getting credit for it. So this told me that this was something that was in demand. And the universities were very pleased with this. So they gave me the green light to go ahead and create a course which was credit bearing. And uh, we launched it the following year. And we've been doing it every year with about 600 students enrolling. And what makes it, I think, unique is that it's, to me, it's a large experiment because we actually get the students to fill in their own sort of levels of happiness and various psychometric tests. And every year we've run the course, we find a significant improvement of about 15% on all these measures. So it's not just an educational course uh, because they have to actually do things. And we discover that actually it seems to make some, some impact. So before we get into the framework of the science of happiness, do you think that students are changing from, let's say, when you first started teaching? Yes and no. My first paper done back in 1986, I think it came out the following year, 87, was on the transition to university. And I was already interested in the fact that students way back when I was an undergrad were experiencing homesickness and this sort of temporary period of uncertainty. So I think that's actually a common experience for all students when they leave the, you know, the confines and the familiarity of their home environment and they go to a new new campus. But very soon they get used to it and, and they kind of adapt to that. I think the difference now is that students are already coming to university with mental health issues. And I think the nature of discussing these things, it's normalized it a lot more now. And it seems to be more pervasive. It certainly seems to feature as an issue that students want to talk about. So I think that I don't think there's any fundamental difference uh, in the human mind, if you like, but uh, the way that we discuss and talk about these things and the way it impacts on students, I think has changed. 